I'm George Buckley, and we're here in Bonaire at Lock Bay with the Sustainability and Environmental Management Project looking at a fetid pile of sargassum seaweed. And so throughout the Caribbean Sea and the entire Gulf of Mexico now, we are seeing uh, these phenomenal blooms of, of sargassum like they've never seen before. And the question becomes, where did it come from? What caused this? At first it was thought that it was pieces that broke off and were spread by hurricanes from Sargasso Sea. And then satellite data shows the equatorial currents off Brazil, uh, coupled with the, the North Atlantic uh, uh, circulation, has brought it up the east coast of Brazil into the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, where for the first time ever, uh, it met the right conditions to just take off, to explode. And those conditions are that the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean Sea have a fever. They're uh, about a degree C centigrade higher than ever before. Uh, and worse than ever before, there's nutrients like we've never seen before washing out from the entire east coast of, of South America uh, and from North America into the Gulf. And this great mixture, this great stew, this great soup has created just the right nutrient and temperature conditions for sargassum seaweed to take off like it's never done before, as we said. And as a result, almost every single island, almost every single shore in the Gulf of Mexico, in the Caribbean Sea, have faced windrows of dying sargassum weed washing up onto their beaches, causing untold economic and environmental problems. We've come here to Lagoon, a small bay where the sargassum is washing in in windrows behind us, so thick that it has covered the surface of the water and suppress the wave action. What is happening is as the flow from the uh, coast of Brazil comes on up into the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean, it is met with all of the nutrients that have run out of the Amazon and Orinoco rivers and others in South America. Over a quarter million cubic meters per second. That is over six million gallons a second washing out. It's met in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean with all the runoff from America, all the effluent from America's southern uh, part of the country, and this discharge from the Mississippi River, from the St. John River in Florida, from the Apalachicola, and the entire southern part of Florida flowing down through all the farms in southern Florida entering out into the Gulf and the Caribbean through the Shark River and Taylor Slough, this great malu, this great stew of nutrients and sewage products and runoff from farms and from roofs and from roads and from lawns has created this rich nutrient broth that once this sargassum is able to get into that, these blooms have taken hold and it starts out as these small, beautiful little vesicle filled uh, sargassum weeds that then clump together and bloom in mass. And if it breaks off, it continues and continues and continues until it washes up in these windrows. When it washes up on these beaches and windrows, it kills everything under it. Everything that was in it also dies. All those things that, that uh, uh, sargassum seaweed is able to provide uh, sustenance and nutrient and habitat for. So as it washes up in these windrows, everything under that is going to die. And then as the sargassum itself dies, it creates this fetid, awful, uh, rotten egg smell. And so this daily, daily uh, cleaning of the beaches, trucking of the sargassum away, this is a problem throughout the Caribbean, throughout the Gulf of Mexico. And as a result, uh, this is a huge economic impact. And as you can imagine, if you were a tourist, you wouldn't want to sit anywhere near that, that fetid mess that's washed up onto the beaches here. We've also seen it affect flamingos and the food that the flamingos eat. Uh, one of our local uh, naturalists, Ali, has uh, been assisting the flamingos by rescuing young ones and uh, uh, feeding them and then releasing them. And so the whole community is starting to come together to try to help the environment. Uh, but there's a lot more that, that needs to be done uh, to keep the situation from getting worse. So what to do? One, we have an idea what the causes are. Two, 
the treatment that's being done so far is at best uh, reactive. When we're cleaning up off beaches, we're putting booms. Uh, we really need to look quickly beyond that in terms of controls. One of those uh, immediate controls would be to get harvesting machines to could start to collect it outside uh, the beaches, outside the bays, and then have barges that it's put onto, and then have those barges bring it to a place where it can be uh, recycled. Islands are victims. Uh, they're not putting the great amounts of nitrates and phosphates and sewage and pollution and runoff out into the uh, Gulf of Mexico, out into the Caribbean, and yet they're, they're met, left with dealing with it. The people who are the cause of this are living inland in the United States. They're living inland in Brazil, running farms. And what we're looking at now is probably one of the uh, worst uh, man-made cause uh, indicators of what we now call the Anthropocene, the era that, where mankind is having all these effects on nature. And this may be the worst algal bloom uh, in the history of mankind on Earth that we've ever seen. And it's getting worse. So the uh, help is needed from all fronts, particularly those that are not on the islands. The victims can only clean it up, and they don't, can only clean up so much so fast. We need help from the places where uh, the nutrients and the septage discharge is coming from along the east coast of South America from the whole southern end of the U.S. to help begin to stop that, stop runoff, pollution, and then help fund cleanups, help create uh, industrial uses for the sargassum so that this waste product can become a useful product and help to save the economies of the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean.